Highlight of our red button coverage, the very promising young Callum Smith on a run of five straight first round knockouts takes on his toughest test to date in prize fighter champion Patrick Mendy for the English title. So don't worry, it's just me. Well, welcome back. Now the English title is on the line as Callum Smith, the youngest of the Smith fighting family, steps up to take on the dangerous Patrick Mendy, also young and with ambitions of his own. This one over 10 rounds. Picking up commentary, Nick Halling and Jim Watt after your MC, John McDonald. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the start of our championship boxing. Would you please welcome to the ring now, Patrick Tiger Mendy. So coming into the ring now, in silence, Patrick Mendy, the 22-year-old. He's coming in to 23 next week. He's hoping to celebrate his birthday by winning the vacant English super middleweight title. And at his request, he comes in to a quiet arena. Normally, they pick a bit of music. This fella, well, I don't know why he has decided just to come in silently, but he had a bit of a chip on his shoulder. I saw him at the uh, pre-fight press conference this week. They introduced his opponent, Callum Smith, as one of the great rising stars. And the look on this fellow's face was as if to say, well, wait till he meets me, Jim. Got a bit of a chip on his shoulder, I think. Yep, uh, I don't think he's uh, here intent to play second fiddle to anybody. He doesn't have the best of records, but he's a lot better than his record suggests. He hasn't had the red carpet treatment. He's had to work for everything he's achieved in boxing. And he'll be looking at this as a huge opportunity to get his, uh, his own career on the road. This is a good match. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the ring the undefeated Callum Mondo Smith! Well, if you haven't seen Callum Smith, all I can really say at this stage is don't go off to the kitchen to make a cup of tea right now. This fella doesn't waste time seven fights he went the distance his first two as we take a quick look at the belt but the last five jim first round knockout serious power big frame they reckon this guy is going to be a real star yeah well they're the one special you don't like to throw it around uh, too often but uh, i mean his performance have been terrific you know he's so business like he's tall but he can do it all he can throw the short punches the long punches we haven't really seen him where he has to struggle as yet or where he has to solve some problems. Maybe we'll see that tonight, but he gives the impression he's more than ready to move up from the level he's been boxing at. Ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Sport in association with Coldwell Boxing proudly presents 10 rounds for the vacant English Super Middleweight Championship. Sponsored here by Daffer Bet and Northfire. And live on Sky Sports joining us for the very best ringside seat in the business. All the officials have been appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control. Our supervisor, Al Hayes, has appointed the three scoring judges, Richie Davis of All Hallows, Steve Gray of Fleetwood, Mark Green of Romford, our timekeeper at the bell from Preston, Jamie Kirkpatrick, and the referee in charge of the action from Paisley, Scotland, Mr. Victor Locker. They are the officials. And uh, here we go, introducing to you firstly, fighting out of the red corner wearing the black trunks, weighing in a 12 stone. 21 fight record, 14 wins, one inside the scheduled distance. Six losses and one draw, coming to the ring as the winner of the prize fighter tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome, originally from Gambia, now boxing out of the Royal Borough of Reading, it's Patrick Tiger Mendy. And across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks, Trimmed with yellow, weighing in at 11 stone, 13 pounds, 11 ounces. He is undefeated. Seven contests, seven wins, five inside the scheduled distance. 
Ladies and gentlemen, from Liverpool, Callum Mondo Smith! And so the waiting's over. This is 10 rounds of boxing for the vacant English Super Middleweight Championship. Okay, James. Here come. Okay, boys, you've had your instructions in the dress room. Remember, obey my commands at all time. Defend yourselves at all time. God bless. Touch gloves. Yep, scheduled for ten rounds then over the English distance. A hug from Joe Gallagher, his trainer, from Callum Smith. He's got big brother Paul in the corner, along with Anthony Crawler, another one of his stable mates. Second out, round one. And if this one, I've said this before, Jim, if this one goes inside a round, I'll be very surprised because Patrick Mendy is elusive, capable, takes a punch as well, and very, very hard to pin down. And already you can see the upper body movement from the guy from Reading. He's going to be tough to pin him down. Yeah, we have to expect that uh, Smith will have to deal with some problems tonight. Mendy's a decent fighter. You look at some of the people he's taken the distance. He's tough, he's knowledgeable, he's an awkward style. And he's still ambitious, which uh, we want to see young Smith in with someone who's brought ambition into the ring. We haven't seen that yet, but we're seeing it here. Yeah, good upper body movement again. A very intelligent boxer as well, Mandy. All right, man, you're through in a second. Well, real trouble here for Mendy. Not another first round win, surely. But he was rocked by that long right hand. This is a guy that's never been stopped. He's been the distance with Patrick Nielsen, 12 rounds in Denmark. 10 rounds with Bradley Price, never stopped, but he was rocked to his boots there. But since then, he's been slipping and sliding and holding, showing some intelligence here, but that woke him up, Jim. That was a terrific shot. I mean, everyone's expecting the body shots, which finished the last couple of uh, performances. But now there's another solid shot from the left hand this time. See, the thing about Smith, he can deliver power from short, from long punches. Terrific prospect. He's in trouble here, Mendy, he really is. Smith missing with the uppercut there, gets him. With a slip, a big right hand, and he lost his feet, and it's a knockout. Four, five, and there's still six, over a minute to go, seven, and Mendy eight, looks shaken. He didn't expect this, and I have to say, not many expected this. He's got him again. And he's just trying to survive here, Mendy. Well, this yep. would be incredible if Smith can pull this off again in the side of round. Body shot. Mendy all over the place again, trying to survive. The eyes are glazed. Yeah, by the time when Mendy should be tightening up, his defences have been scattered. He's all over the place. Still get to three quarters of a minute still to go. He needs to tighten up, he needs to grab hold. Get his head clear, but he's doing all the wrong things. And his legs, it's like he's on ice skates in there. 30 yes. seconds left of the round. Smith We're complaining there about the, to the referee about the grabbing hold, but Mendy just has to do what it takes to get through this round. Terrific performance, terrific start from Smith. Big left hook coming in, and Mendy again, shipping punishment, hanging on, caught with another left hook again. The legs all over the place again. 15 seconds left, can he get through the round? But he is getting battered in there. Victor Lachlan says that's enough, another in the first round, unbelievable from Callum Smith, four seconds left, Mendy was being taken to the cleaners, and if you didn't think Callum Smith was special before tonight, that maybe he was just beating journeyman up, that's Patrick Mendy, a very durable and capable and ambitious opponent. He's taken to pieces inside a round. Would you complain at that stoppage? No, I don't complain because it was one-way traffic and Mendy was doing all the wrong things. I think he was badly stunned earlier in the round, so the strength had gone from the legs and there were no punches in his own punches, even when he was letting them go. And he was being hurt. That's a beautifully delivered right hand. OK, didn't score the knockdown, but you can see the effect. And I don't know that Mendy ever really got his head cleared from that point onwards because his legs were unsteady. And when that's the case, there's not really any purchase in your own punches. 
And from that point, the young Smith just was doing particularly, completely what he wanted to do. A little bit erratic at times, but I mean, he couldn't have dreamed about a first round stoppage here. So he was pouring everything out, missing a few times, maybe not catching the, the target cleanly, but you see the effect there from that left jab when he did land cleanly. That's a terrific performance. I mean, Mendy just did not know what to do, couldn't cope with the pressure or the punches coming towards him. And the only thing he could do was go, but it wasn't a clean knockdown that time. The punch seemed to land above the ear, but it scrambled his senses. And again, he, with the experience he has, you think he would have maybe fiddled a little bit and got himself through it. But he's, his defences disappeared from that point on. One way traffic, and uh, Victor Lachlan did exactly the right thing at the right time. All of these punches were hurtful. And he, as you say, Jim, never got over the first one. He was just trying to slip and slide and survive after that. And then Callum Smith just stayed on it. This might be some kind of record. Six in a row inside a round. An amazing performance. I mean, he's surpassed anything he's done so far. He's won the English super middleweight title in his eighth fight. How far can this young man go? Absolutely astonishing tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, timekeeper Jamie Kirkpatrick has recorded a time of two minutes and 53 seconds of the first round mendy in no position to continue therefore your winner and a new english super middleweight champion from liverpool callum mondo smith and now i'll hello Al Hughes one hour present the championship bell. Well, sensational stuff from Callum Smith, the new English champion. He's now 8-0 with six first round knockouts in a row, just 23 years of age. We'll hear from him shortly when he talks to Andy Scott. But Tony, he looks a world-class prospect. I've said this now for quite a little while. Callum Smith is a, the most outstanding prospect in the country, and that's proven it. A prize fighter winner. A really good fighter who's gone rounds with everybody put in front of him. He's spatched in a round. It's a fantastic, fantastic display. Mendy never seemed to really recover from that first right hand. His legs were very wobbly from then onwards. It, it was just it was a huge right hand. Callum timed it perfect. Everything was behind the jab. He was relaxed. And that was the end of the fight. It was the beginning of the end for Mendy. It really was. Do you think he's potentially the best prospect in the world right now? I'm trying to think of other prospects to match to him, but I'd go as far as saying I really do. I really, really do, because you you can't really cast the likes, you know, of the of the prospects that are taken over after the Olympic Games as prospects. This is this is a guy who's come from nowhere. Nobody knew nothing before he started, and now, in my opinion, he is one of the best prospects in the world. Well, he keeps his feet on the ground. Here's Andy Scott with him. Callum, Ed just said it there. A sensational performance against an opponent that had never been stopped. What sort of statement have you sent out tonight? Um, again, the same, you know, same interview, <laughs> same, same, innit? But, you know, Pat and Newbro, Patrick Mendy, boxed some very good kids, he'd been abroad to box them, and you know, we'd never been stopped. And in his losses, he'd always give a good account of himself and won rounds, and he's never been beaten convincingly. So, you know, I had a feeling I might get to him late, but I generally didn't think I'd do him early. Was it a good stoppage? Um, yeah, I think so, because I don't think he wanted to be in there, he was just looking for old and old. And, making a bit of a messy fight but that was I was to blame as well I was rushing a bit but you know I hate him and I saw the finish and I've done him but maybe that's something we need to work on with Joe we're going on about the record but really when you woke up this morning did you genuinely believe that you could get another first round stoppage no not at all no I knew I didn't go out I went out on the back foot again I never said people must think I run out at 100 mile an hour and I don't you know, maybe when I caught him I did but you know, I, was, it was a I thought it was a close fight till I caught him you know, it surprised me how long his jab was and you know, it took a bit of adjusting to get my own going but then you know, caught him in a good right hand and you know, feeling my power's improving all the time. Yeah, you mentioned your power there, let's talk about that a little bit. You had an extensive amateur career which is obviously a different code but you know, do you feel that you're more suited to the pros and where, did you show this sort of power in the amateurs at all? No, but I don't think many people do, you only get the occasional few. You know, the amateurs, if you're a top amateur then well, normally you, know, you adjust to the system and it's more no scoring points and getting away, it's not really in there to hurt each other, but you know, I had a feeling when I turned pro, I had to adapt and you know, I was young young for my age and you know, I feel I'm still maturing now and 
as you can see my performances, my power's improving all the time. We'll hear from Eddie and Joe in a minute, but what do you want to do next? Because how quickly do you feel that you can be moved? I mean, that was supposed to be a genuine test tonight. That was supposed to be rounds in the bank. Um, I don't know, you know, I'm trying not to get too ahead of myself, you know, I'm winning, but, you know, I think you can't really step too far, because if you step once too far, then it's too late, you can't go back, so, you know, the reason I'm with Matt is I believe they're the best in the business at the job, and, you know, with Joe's my manager, whoever they say is next, you know, if they believe in me, then surely I can beat them. Joe, let's go to you. Before Callum turned professional, I remember you saying that you may well have the best of the bunch out of the Smith brothers there. Is he proving you right, and what do you do with him now? Potentially, he could be the best of them. Like I say, he's not proven yet. Paul Smith, Stephen Smith, they're hard acts to follow, but potentially he could be. But like I say, he's unstoppable at the moment, isn't he? I thought tonight, I said before, and I'd be happy with a 98, 92, 97, 93, as long as he got rounds under the belt. I think the only one that I thought he would get a first round knockout was Paul tonight. So he spars him, he will know the power of him. But I'm really pleased in the summer. Um, he's only been pro 10 months. That's his eighth fight in 10 months, made his pro debut in November. And like I say, he's punching power now. He's come down with his technique. He stayed in the gym all over the summer, worked on his strength, and that's uh, the results of it there now, speaking volumes. On paper, we always seem to think that uh, the English title was a natural progression to the, uh, you know, the British title, the Lonsdale belt. Paul, this is uh, going to be interesting because you hold the British title. Yeah. Uh, is your plan to win it outright and then let Callum fight for it? There's no chance that you'll ever box yourself, uh, the two of you will never box each other, obviously. Oh, no, no, I've, I've got it in the changing rooms, and I think he's best just taking it all now, isn't he, after that performance? <laughs> I'm not gonna people keep asking the serious genuine question that will we fight you know and it's ridiculous but i just want this last defense i'm gonna win it outright and then i'm vacating straight away you know i don't i, I don't want to make the mistake of staying up this level too long on a personal level for my career but there's no one better in my opinion that i could vacate the belt for as my own brother you know and he can go and fight for that against whoever the board nominated to fight and I'm, I'm confident of him beating beating anyone basically number three or four down you obviously won't fight him in a professional ring, but you've got a tight knit camp there in, in yeah. Gallagher's gym and you spar each other. So how good do you think he can be? We, we spar a lot and it, he helps me probably more than I help him. You know, the, the great spars, I'm helping him with a bit of experience. I'm probably the only person who's took him past six rounds so far in, in, in a ring, you know. And it, it's great for him, hopefully, but it's great for me because I've got a young, fresh, talented, powerful kid trying to take me head off every time I spar. And it's great spars and I'm learning a lot. We have a close camp, as you say. He's got Callum Johnson in there, Ophie Burton, who's having great spars with as well. And the camp's buzzing, and, and Callum, and I'm delighted for him at what he's just done. But he's proved he's ready. You know, I think after this fight, he can go for the Commonwealth title while I'm fighting for mine, and then I'll vacate because after both of them. Callum, what's this prospect pressure like? Ed and Tony were talking just before they came to me there, and they're saying one of the most exciting prospects, not just in Britain, but in the world. Do you embrace this pressure, this tag that's been put upon you? Yeah. No, obviously, it's nice for people to say that, but, you know, Joe's always said to me, you know, create the hype but don't believe it and you know I've got a good gym now me and you know I just turn to just get my head down in the gym, you know, keep working hard and just you know, I believe in my own ability and just as long as I put the work in and I can believe I can go all the way but well that's the exciting part to follow my journey and see how far I can go. One of the people who's gonna be guiding you is the man on your right, Eddie Hearn. Eddie, what did you make of the performance tonight first off and secondly, where what what do you plan to do with him in the future? Well, it was nice, you know, to, to have some butterflies. I said to him yesterday, nice to go into a fight with a proper opponent, someone who's here to win. You know, Patrick Mendy told me yesterday that he's going to beat Callum Smith and then he wants me to sign him. You know, so he was here to win the fight. And, and when you demolish someone like that, of that ability, after just seven fights, you really wonder where to go from here because, you know, the, bro the brother's got the, the British title, Rocky's fighting tonight for the Commonwealth title, Rocky and Callum is a big fight in Liverpool. But I don't think there's anyone he can fight for this belt that isn't a mismatch. So what do we do? You know, I think the answer to that is we look on the world scene and we start moving him up the world rankings as quickly as this. This is, as I said in, before his last fight and after his last fight, the best prospect in Britain right now and potentially in the world. And people have got to remember these nights because when you pick up these belts in arenas like this, this is when you can look back when he is a world champion. That's what I believe he'll be and ask, were you there in Olympia that night when he got his sixth consecutive first round knockout against Patrick Mendy to win that little old English belt? You know, British boxing is booming right now. And then this is really the forefront of, of the prospects in the country. We've got so many great prospects, but this is the guy who's doing it. You know, people are taking note of him, the governing bodies, the broadcasters in America, I'm banging the drum all the time. So next October the 26th in Sheffield, potentially defend that belt or move up and win an intercontinental belt, get up the world rankings, then out again on Frotch Groves on the 23rd of November. And then I think we take him to America for a fight before the end of the year. You know, we've got to keep him moving, keep him fresh, but so, so exciting. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with Callum Smith. Remember the name and remember every part of this journey. 
The Ray Eddie spoke there. I think we're fighting Andre Ward before the end of the season. <laughs> as long as we do it on Sky. Thanks to everyone. Well, another impressive win for Callum Smith. Put it into context.